Good morning and welcome to the beautiful sanctuary of Friendship Presbyterian Church in Athens, Georgia. My name is Tom Buchanan and I am the pastor of Friendship Church and I'm joined today by my friend and Friendship Church member, Karen Norris, who will be serving as liturgist. We are both very glad that you're joining us today. Today is Reformation Sunday, a day we remember with gratitude reformers in every age who have called the church back to the challenge and the simplicity of the gospel. In this spirit, we continue our fall stewardship emphasis in worship, having started last Sunday, continuing today, and concluding on November the 1st with the dedication of our 2021 pledges for the work of God here at Friendship. Our theme for this season is Ever Only All for Thee, taken from the last verse of that great hymn of the church, Take My Life and Let It Be. If you are a member here at Friendship, you should have already received a pledge card in the mail. If you haven't received it yet, or if you're not a member but have been blessed by this online ministry and would like to consider making a pledge, please call the church office or email our office administrator, Donna Rigsby, at office at gotofriendship.org. Well, that's all I have to share now in the way of announcements. And so, as God's own people, let us now with gladness prepare our hearts for the worship of God. I'm sing together our opening hymn attributed to the reformer John Calvin, I greet thee who my sure redeemer art, verses 1, 3, and 5. I greet thee who my sure redeemer art, my only trust and savior Make us 
Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 34 to 40. Listen now for what the Spirit is saying to the church. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from earth through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as the As you all know by now, 
we have started the fall stewardship emphasis in worship with the theme, Ever Only All for Thee, taken from the last line of that great hymn of the church, Take My Life and Let It Be. No line and no hymn expresses more beautifully that sense of a total consecration to God. Last Sunday, in exploring the story of Jesus' confrontation with Pharisees and Herodians over whether tax should be paid to Caesar or not, we boldly confessed that we do not belong to the Caesars of that day or of our own. We instead belong, body and soul, in life and in death, to God. And that just as Caesar's image was stamped on that coin in that story, God's own image is stamped on us. And because this is so, we are to give to God what is God's. But what does this mean for us? How do we give back to God what is God's? The scripture text for this Sunday answers this question. The scene follows last week's story, with Jesus still in the temple and answering those who would challenge him. This time, it is a lone Pharisee, an expert in the religious law, who asks him what may look like an innocent question, teacher, Which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now let me say, it's anything but an innocent question. It is asked to test him, or more precisely, to draw him into a legal debate over the relative fine points of hundreds of religious rules and regulations that the Pharisees knew so well and held so dear and so trip Jesus up in front of the crowd. You see, they had scoured the scriptures over the years and discovered their 613 commandments. Silly you, you thought there were only 10. There were 248 positive commandments, that is, do this, and 365 negative commandments, don't do this one for every day of the year. So many rules to cover every conceivable circumstance. The Pharisee could hardly wait for Jesus to answer and pounce on him for why he apparently doesn't value highly enough the other 612. But Jesus, Jesus saw past the morass of options posed to him. He answered simply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These two held together are what is most important in life. They together Jesus tells us, are the main thing. Now, like the Pharisee's question, which was anything but innocent, Jesus' simple answer is anything but simple. Drawing on Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18, the answer accomplishes two things. First, it shows that Jesus whose authority and orthodoxy has been questioned at every turn, is calling on the very heart of the faith. Love of God, love of neighbor. Not even the Pharisee could argue with that. But second, and more importantly, it reveals his questioner's spiritually starved worldview. For the Pharisee, life under the law is a life dedicated to scrupulously following all of God's commandments, all 613 of them, and carefully avoiding any hint of breaking even one of them, 
even by accident. But Jesus' seemingly simple answer undermines this entire approach to faith. Jesus' answer reveals that the law, that God's law, is not finally about rules and rule-keeping, but about love, about really loving God and one's neighbor, and not, as Dr. Tom Long has put it, about trying to figure out how to avoid stepping on cracks in the legal sidewalk. We honor God's law not as a means of acquiring merit or achieving some mythical perfection, but as our trustworthy guide into living lives of love. Loving God and loving neighbors as we love ourselves is the great point of life, our ultimate response to the divine. Our belonging to God, our giving to God what is due God, means that above all else, we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. And like this, bound up with this, inseparable from this, is to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is what it's all about, friends. This is the main thing. But as anyone who has tried to live in this world knows, keeping this main thing as the main thing is harder than it may seem. There was once a woman who bought a parrot in a pet store. She wanted companionship, someone to talk with. And the day after she bought the, the parrot, she brought him back and said to the store manager, he won't talk, my parrot won't talk. The store manager asked, well, does he have a mirror in his cage? Parrots love mirrors. And so, buoyed up by the idea, she bought a mirror and left. But the next day she came back and said, my bird is still not talking, I just don't understand it. And the manager looked befuddled at first, but then lighted up with an idea. How about a ladder? Parrots love ladders. When he's really happy with a ladder, he'll talk. And so the woman bought a ladder and left. But the next day, she was back, complaining that even with the mirror and the ladder, the bird was still not talking. The manager said, I know what you need. The bird wants a swing. He'll be happy when he has a swing, and then, then he'll talk. And she reluctantly bought a swing and left. Sure enough, the next day she was back, and she had a sad face. My parrot died, she said. I am so sorry, the manager responded. But did your parrot ever say anything before he died? The woman replied, well, yes, in, in fact, he did just this morning. In a very weak voice, he asked me, don't they sell any food at that pet store? <laughs> Sorry to laugh about a, a dead parrot. But. You know, in her own way, our well-meaning parrot purchaser was missing the main thing, wasn't she? The most important thing. As good as they are for pet birds, mirrors, ladders, and swings are ultimately sideshows compared to the main thing. Without the main thing, a parrot won't make it. But with it, all those other fun things could find their place. Oftentimes in the church and in life, we miss the main thing, the main thing of loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. It is the true food that will keep us alive and thriving. But often we expend so much energy and attention 
on what for us are ultimately mirrors, ladders, and swings that we then find ourselves starving for the main thing. We may spend so much time with those substitutes that we don't even remember what the main thing is. Of course, I suppose that's why many people turn to religion in the first place, to help them clear away all the mess in their lives so that they can live into what matters most. But sadly, oftentimes religion in practice just makes things worse, pushing forward mirrors, ladders, and swings with a holy veneer. That was the mistake of the Pharisees. But things have a way of repeating themselves. The medieval Christian church grew up an impressive edifice of rules and requirements of their own, defining who was in and who was out. And then the Reformation came to be, calling the church back to the grace to be known in living out the main thing of God's love. It had a promising beginning inspired by fresh, freedom-filled readings of the Gospels and of the letters of Paul. The early Protestants had high hopes for a new unity of vision and purpose in keeping the main thing the main thing. But soon, they too lost the plot, bitterly dividing over fine details of doctrine and leaving behind the main thing, the only thing, can finally sustain our hearts and souls and minds. And so on and so on through the ages. We human beings have a hard time keeping the main thing the main thing. And so we have a really hard time with giving to God what belongs to God, our whole hearts and souls and minds. We know that all too well. But here's some good news. The gospel is not given to tell us something that we already know, but to tell us something that we don't know, not really, or cannot fully see. That though we fail, though we again and again refuse the new life we could know, that though all this is true, It is not the whole truth. That deeper than our failings and our blindness, there is a presence, holy and beautiful and fully alive within us, which calls us by name in love and will never let us go. The ultimate foundation of the commandment to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves is the unfathomable love of God for us and for our neighbors, a love which never fails. This is why we are here. This is why we gather around these words and these stories each week. This is why every year we stop and ask ourselves, What God is calling us to do now to support our community's ministry and mission and live out our faith with passion. And as we do, we live a little more day by day into the main thing, into who we really are, into who we were created by God to be. This is the greatest adventure of all. To the glory of God. Amen.
Let us now affirm our faith through the use of a portion of a Declaration of Faith, which was adopted by the General Assembly of the PCUSA in 1985. Let us affirm our faith together, saying, The Word which was with God from the beginning was embodied in Jesus Christ. We hold that what God says to us and does for us centers in Jesus Christ, our living Lord, as he is remembered, known, and expected. In Christ, God's word of acceptance takes flesh. By grace, through faith, we are set right with God, adopted as children of God, not because of anything we have done, but because of what Christ has done. In Christ, God's word of demand is lived out, to love God and neighbor as he did is what God requires of us. The Spirit adds no different word from God, but leads us deeper into the truth of God uttered in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now pray to our compassionate and merciful God that his love for us may animate all we do and that our love may become contagious. Let us pray together, Lord, make us instruments of your love. O loving God, we pray that the church, your people, the body of Christ, may never cease to proclaim by its teaching, life, and liturgy that love of God and neighbor, which is the heart of the gospel, and that people are God's gift to us. We pray in one voice. Lord, make us instruments of your love. O oh God, we pray that people may not lose their hearts in today's systems of profit, efficiency, production, and competition, but that they may keep giving first place to human relationships of friendship and respect. We pray in one voice, Lord, make us instruments of your love. We pray, O oh God, that we may have room in our hearts and homes for refugees and strangers, that we may learn to share our goods and ourselves with the little people loved by God, the poor and the lonely and those who suffer. We pray in one voice, Lord, make us instruments of your love. We pray, O oh Lord, that those who don't know how to forgive, those who have not experienced much happiness in life, or whose longings have not been fulfilled, may encounter a bit of your goodness in our attention and care. We pray in one voice, Lord, make us instruments of your love. We pray, O oh God, that in our Christian communities we may uplift one another rather than tear down, accept each other with trust and affection, forgive one another from the heart, and go forward together in hope and love. We pray in one voice, Lord, make us instruments of your love. O oh, gentle God, help us to love you and one another with your measure, that is, without measure, through Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The scripture tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, and all our soul, and all our mind, and our neighbors as ourselves. In generous giving of ourselves and of our goods, we demonstrate this love and we witness to the kingdom of God. Your giving, in part expressed in your financial stewardship towards Friendship Church, is deeply appreciated as we seek to follow Jesus Christ in these times. We are grateful for the ongoing support of our members and old friends as well as offerings from those of you who have discovered this ministry since we moved online and have been blessed by it. As always, all gifts may be made by check, mailed to the church office at 8531 Macon Highway, Athens, Georgia, 30606. But know that we also have online giving available on our website. 
simply go to our website, go to friendship.org, and scroll to the bottom and click on Give Now. Doing so will take you to a secure portal where you will be asked to create a simple profile and then allow you to make donations through your bank account or through a debit or credit card. We deeply appreciate your support. Well, now I invite you to join us in singing our closing hymn, Lord, whose love through humble service, verses 1 and 4. Lord, whose love through humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We are servants, bring the worship, not a voice alone but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift that you impart. Called from worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go. To the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds to show. Hope and health, good will and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give that your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. Well, we are now at the end of our time together this morning. Thank you so very much for joining us. We hope to see you back here again next Sunday as we celebrate All Saints Sunday and dedicate our 2021 pledges to God. If you have any comments or questions or would like to make a prayer request, please reach out to me at Pastor Tom at GoToFriendship.org. And so let us go in peace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, or pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood us to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned in giving to all men that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life.